<laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Footy Arm Podcast. Uh, ahead of the draft, really excited to be back in the studio um, for the first time. It is looking a little bare. I'm with Cohen Sanchez from East Fremantle. Cohen, how you going, mate? Hey, mate. Good, fella. How you going? I'm good. Now, thoughts on the studio. Um, this is the first time it's been back in a year. It is looking a bit bare than it usually is. A lot of the shirts haven't got around to hanging them up. But uh, do you yeah, like no. it? Do you like the setup? No, I rate the setup. It's got a long list of jerseys that I think uh, Wesley and East Mountain could uh, add to. Oh, so. definitely. I have been working on that. So no success just yet. Speaking of no success, mm. um, golf this morning. Um, talk me through how we were looking yeah. at ten thirty. It's yeah. now eleven <laughs> forty. What happened out there? Although I honestly I thought it was going to be nine holes to start off with, and then the uh, the mate was just like, "Oh no, it's eighteen holes." So I had to bear for another eight nine holes of just hitting it in the bush. Uh, yeah, a couple drops and um, yeah, missed some people. Just how many um, balls did you lose? Oh, we did not too bad. Like, I mean, I haven't played in a year. Like, yeah. if, if we're going to do an excuse, that's pretty good. So, like you know, it's, I think I lost two balls. That's incredible. It's, it's pretty good. That's, my oh, that's really I, impressive. My standard is pretty good. I, so. Yeah, I've only played golf maybe three times. <laughs> <laughs> I can't manage more than nine holes. It's yeah, like nah. you do the first three and you're like, oh, this is this is kind yeah, of fun. And then so, like yeah, a whole like three 100%. or four, you get like one good like, I don't know, seven iron like drive 100%. from the fairway. You're thinking you're good. And clear, then yeah. triple bogey, quadruple bogey. Yeah. Um, <laughs> One time I hit oh. a bogey. I think that's the best thing I've ever done on a hole, and I celebrated. <laughs> that's what I, got today. I celebrated Solid. after that. I was on it. I was hit so the happy. bogey. I was like, "That's yeah, that I good. could be Tiger." Yeah. But um, yeah, do you play any other sports um, outside of? I mean, golf's just made the return. Yeah, golf's just yeah, yeah. That's probably one of the top top sports I've here that, yeah. that I play, and I'm probably the best at. Um, no, I like to play tennis. Um, tennis, yeah, probably probably tennis. It's probably the main one. Um, beach volleyball because my sister plays beach that's, volleyball. That's sick. So it's it's pretty hard. Like she gives me a run for for her money. So yeah, yeah, I was in Adelaide and I saw some blokes like just playing beach volleyball. Yeah. like on a Saturday Sunday morning. I thought yeah. oh, that'd be sick. It is pretty. Good. It's taxing though. The beach. It would be it's the the and then when it gets hot, it's uh, it's difficult. So. Oh yeah, you see it. It's really impressive in the Olympics. Yeah, um, to 100%. watch it. Um, now, golf, is that because obviously everyone gets into golf <laughs> with footy? I don't know if that's just become like a yeah. thing. All yeah. young guys do now, or if it is like footy centric, well, like a bit of both. Is it because you're getting ready to get drafted? You want to make sure you're sharp and ready for it when you're on a oh, list. No, I just just had nothing else to do, and like I always say no uh, to this mate because I've always had footy on, um, and I've just been too cooked. So I was like, you know, why not? You know, I haven't played in a little while. Just you know, just hit the ball, don't think about it, and just uh, yeah, just didn't go to plan, but, you know, I think Everyone I have else. to go back to the driving range first before I go back. Oh, to absolutely. Just stick to the driving range and mini yeah. golf. Now, you do psychology at uni, correct? correct? Do you go <laughs> any sports? <laughs> I'm on <laughs> mate, mate. <laughs> what? Um, no. Do you do any, like, sports psychology stuff specifically yeah. or just well, psychology generally? Like, right now, it's obviously, like, second semester and the first semester, like, first year, you're just doing, like, you know, broad terms, broad, like, obviously, units. Um, and then, like, I think... Second, third year, that's when you start like diving into like sports cycle, clinical side. So yeah, I don't know yet. Uh, I think I think I'll probably head in the sports sports direction. Um, yeah. But apart from that, yeah, probably not. Yeah. Now I think, as someone who's not very confident with their skills, I'm very easily rattled. Um, I could definitely use some psychology. <laughs> Is there anything you've learned? Yeah. I guess that's helped you out on the field this year. Um. Yeah. I think in terms of like keeping my mind away from the external external stuff and um, bring my my focus to like what's in front of me, like the now. Um, and obviously there's broad terms, but you know, through footy wise and all that off field, just obviously ignoring anything that's going to stem my mind away from doing the best I can. Um, so I've just implemented a few, obviously mental techniques. Um, obviously meditation has been a big part of this year. Um, just, just, yeah, just to get me like primed and focused in the head. Cause obviously these days the mental side is probably, if not more important than the, um, the actual game itself. So yeah, just, just to tick on that. Absolutely. Now, another thing, like when you're in the groups, especially I guess state, do they do they have like sports psychs for you with like state and Colts um, level? No, they don't. They don't, they don't have the psychs, um, but like obviously, the, like the coaches are there pretty much. You know, give you what you need, really. Like yeah. They, 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 in terms of getting your mind right, like Lee Walker is like the well being. He's he's awesome for that. Like he's always there for you. That you need to obviously rant. Um, so he just gets your head right. Yeah. yeah. Now, some people like. Yeah, when you're in those groups, someone just becomes like the team hairdresser out of the boys. Maybe someone's the team coffee maker. <laughs> have you sort of become like the unofficial team psych? Have you given any boys like s- some advice? Uh, I mean, I try to, but I don't know if they listen. Um, yeah. No, nah, I think, yeah. Uh, I was trying to think back like, to what I've actually given like, in terms of advice. I don't know. I think, I think you've given Drizzy some advice. Like you can ask him. Uh, yeah. 
probably going to be able to recall anything. But was he advised not to beatbox on radio? Because I did hear he was beatboxing <laughs> on radio last week. No, 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 it wasn't at all. Um, yeah, no, I think, no, I'd, I'd like to say that I have, but I'd probably yeah. not. If if I could get some advice from you, obviously we've got a pretty big game coming up on yeah, Sunday. Um, I keep, like in my last, I think, 10 recordings, I think out of yeah. five of them I've finished second. Um, so I guess, you know, there's some part of it that comes down to skill, but yeah. if I'm constantly finishing second, you'd think maybe there's something mentally going on there. Um, is there anything you'd say to me to, I guess, get past that and stop myself from crying to sleep every night? <laughs> well, I think it's just like, you know, you're consistent. That's one thing. Yeah. So, you know, consistent, like that's what you want. Like, and if you're just finishing last and then second, then that's not you. But like, you know, consistently second, it means that you're knocking on the door. So you just got to keep your head down, bum up and just, um, yeah, keep grinding away. Don't give up. Okay, so never yeah, up, never I'm, I'm four years in, I haven't yeah. given up yet, I'm really trying, and um, setting the tone as well, obviously, yeah. I'm going to have the first kick on Sunday, because yeah. I have had the most wins yeah. this year, in about 35 episodes, mm. so what do you think, like, for setting the tone, what's important there, like, when you go out in a game, and you you want to, or you always want to start good mm. early, is there any sort of mental aspect that you, you look towards? No, I think you're just going to be confident in your ability. Like, you're just going to, you know, you've, you've practised these, you've done these over and over again. you just got to be, you know, you've got to back yourself in. And I yeah. think, um, you know, if you go out there and you just, you know, go from a tight angle or something like that, I don't think the boys are going to be quite used to I really needed that. And I think maybe after this, yeah. I might just sit on the couch, get a bit of a therapy session. Yeah, no way, you anytime, anytime. Um, Now, you've had your fair share of injury experience, yeah. I believe. I'm not entirely sure, of, I guess, the timeline of everything and mm. what it is. So what has been your injury experience in the past few years? Yeah, so obviously, like, you know... <laughs> Obviously unlucky or whatever you call it, like it's the way it is. Um, just last year, just obviously bottom age season and did like sort of my sort of my groin, not not too bad, but just kind of roller coaster ride with all. Um, yeah, just trying to get back to playing and um, kind of the mental side as well, just ticking along with that. And obviously that put me out until obviously played the championships in the last couple of games, and that was pretty good. And then obviously this season coming to this season, didn't want to do too much, but obviously wanted to get enough into me that I could actually play the season and um yeah it's probably yeah obviously the season was going well championships championships were going well and um yeah I just had a little niggle and I just went for a little kick and had a little niggle and like my right abdominal um kind of like a little strain um that didn't I didn't think that was going to be um as worse as it was um obviously yeah looking back like it put me out for obviously the finals and then combine and at the end of the day, like, yeah, I'm just going to take it as it is. Um, like, I'm building from it now, building it back up. So, um, but, yeah, I've obviously had lucky enough to have the professionals behind me, like, you know, state physio and whatnot that I, you know, respect their, their judgment and they just said that it's not worth the risk. So, um, yeah, and I've got to listen to my body as well. So, it's yeah. just been one of the things. And... I guess missing out on the finals run freeze from Randall because you know you're pretty confident you'd hope this is your last season at the Sharks for at least a few years. We'd, we'd hope a decade or so. Hopefully you never have to go back to the Waffle. <laughs> Hopefully, you know, this is it for you. Yeah. But, you know, I guess knowing, you know, it's such a core group, the Colts group that you have, it's always one that's going to stick with you. Yeah. How did you, I guess, handle missing out on the finals there? Was there, you know, a period where you were trying to rush to get back for it or at any stage in the finals? How did you handle yeah. having to sit on the sidelines for that, especially as such a big leader in that side? Yeah, look, it's it's a difficult one um, and something that it's it's hard to sit by and just and, and, and let them, you know, and let it run its course. But I think um, learning from the previous injury that I had last year, I think it's it's a major step you're showing and actually this in my body and, and knowing, you know, that, got the people around you that you've, you've put in, you put the stuff in place for you mm -hmm. and you just got to obviously listen to your body and listen to them and, and know that you know whatever time right timeline it is it's you just got to follow that um yeah obviously it's it was annoying that you know i couldn't play but i think i had i backed the boys 100 percent. like um that was a thing like if we were obviously lucky enough to make the grand year then i would have like just you know like i said all the physio said that yeah just you know quarter zone or whatever so I was backing the boys in to make it and then I would have just jabbed it and who cared and then played. Um, but, yeah, it's the way things are. and um, Yeah, look, it's you take a lot of learnings out of it, but I think you just got to be patient and, and let it run its course. So. Yeah, now I want to talk about school footy last year, throw it back to last year, because I, obviously, public school, yeah. don't really know much about the private school setups. Yeah. Real fish out of water whenever I'm at one of those schools. So when did you first crack into to the Wesley side, mm. I guess, to start with? Uh, th I think back in... I think it was year ten, so I was pretty, yeah, pretty scrawny, scrawny kid and really small kid. 
and I was lucky enough to get a gig in year 10. And I still remember the boys. We, we weren't the best side, but we had a lot of culture and a lot of character. So. You have some like good players, but Wesley never seems yeah. to like be up there. Yeah. Well, I mean, last year we were, and the year before we just we bloody had a great, we had a great two years, and um, we just couldn't pe- piece it together. Like we've lost a scotch twice, like we choked in the end, and um, yeah, it wasn't ideal. But yeah, we we had a great great team. Yeah. Who's and I guess you might be biased with this one, but who's got the best crowd in the PSA? Because like you see, there's occasionally pretty mm. ripper crowds, better than the Colts crowds you turn yeah, to get. 100%. So who's got the best crowd there? Oh, I try not to be biased, but honestly, you reckon without even being biased and like going to other games and stuff, because when I was I obviously wasn't playing because of state, I think actually just Wesley, because the amount of boys that got behind on the hill and just when we beat Scotch and, and whatnot on Aquinas, top of the table, they just all rushed on the field. It was just like an awesome experience. So. Yeah, and I feel like the intent, if anything, there'd be more I guess, desire to win with Wesley than East from Answer. I'm not saying he didn't want to with East from Answer, but I feel like it's a lot more patriotic when it's the school footy, is there a difference in, I guess, the off-field sort of approach of professionalism between PSA and Waffle Colts? Um, not necessarily. Like, for me, I think I just try to keep my my values and my and, and the way I go about it, no matter how I am, no matter off on, on the field, um, the same. I think, obviously, injuries not playing. I think I just, I just kept getting everyone on the – obviously – try to get everyone on the right uh, page and listen to everyone that I could. And, and at the end of the day, yeah, just following that process and wherever it leads me, it leads me. But, yeah, just trusting in that, that it'll, it'll get me to where I want to, yeah. Yeah, now you obviously played with some very talented players. As far as the players you played against, who would you say was your toughest opponent in the PSA? Oh, jeez, that's, that's a good question. Played against them, I think it's, it's difficult because every player's got, like, in their own right set of traits that, you know, you know make them really good I think in the draft year when I think I was in year 11 and I was still, like still a small kid I think you know the likes of like Sheldrick and Erasmus playing in the midfield against them they were they were really good and but even our likes of our like Wesleyans like Ruben like Arby Jones I obviously not necessarily play against them but yeah we yeah we, they, were, they were really good yeah. yeah now you come into this year you're obviously a pretty well regarded player but as someone who's I'd say our height you've got a st- fair bit on me still with an extra five centimetres but as someone who is a smaller player <laughs> it's always I guess an yeah. uphill battle going yeah. into the draft because you say you think to Jed Hagen last year someone who terrific footballer but mm. you know undersized so clubs aren't taking him you know you've got that little bit extra work to do yeah. what was your approach to the off season this year I guess yeah. trying to best prepare yourself both on and off the field for, for this season? Yeah, it's a good question. Look, like, obviously, as a smaller type player, I, I knew that, you know, I'd have to be a lot cleaner um, and, and work on my speed more. And I think just pre-season, I was just grinding away at that and slowly but surely I knew that, obviously, you know, working on my acceleration as well and when I do, if I do go forward, working on that, um, the contest side, like, for the ball, I think, was a major part of... Um, the stepping stone um, Also yeah But at the end of the day I think You know You can't Yeah For me as a smaller Type play It's 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 hard to It's hard to judge Because you look at Jed Hagen and, and, and you look at the way The draft went And then you just think Oh you know Things happen like, you, you just never know what, you, what, what could happen So Like yeah I look at it And I'm just like You know It is what it is And I just can do The best I can And I look back at the season From the, like, the games That I have played And I think I've showed You know can do so absolutely now in terms of you know preparing for the off season i think everyone thinks they know what their weaknesses are and their strengths are mm. do you get much i guess outside help from coaches or teammates or yeah. anyone who's watching to ask what they think you should work on and how they think you should go about it or is it sort of just you know what you want to work on you're going to work on that um i think a bit of both like you obviously you know what you coming into the season you know what you want to work on and you know what you want to get better at and for me it was always like just chipping away at everything trying to get not everything better but you always want to get you know you want to get fitter you want to get stronger and you know obviously the little things like the ground balls and everything be clean um but i think as the season goes and the season progresses you want to get as much feedback as you can and obviously through shimano and um through state just getting all the coaches feedback and kind of bringing into you know finding it into one thing um, or a couple of things that you really need to, you know, not just keep ticking away um, before the draft. So, yeah. Yeah. Now, I, I don't know how common it is, but sometimes you hear of, like, clubs telling 
think managers or coaches what they want to see more of out of a player. Mm. Had you heard anything about what clubs wanted to see from you over the course of this year, I guess, in certain positions or mm. with certain aspects of your game? Yeah, look, you know, obviously when talking to the manager, it's it's it's, it's hard because, you know, at the end of the day, they just, I think they just wanted me to see me play. Like, yeah. And it, it's fair call because, you know, they hadn't seen much of me and... Um, yeah, they just wanted to see me go out there, and I think if it's obviously championships, I was playing um, midfield, but I think they wanted to see me more forward. So obviously, state just you know put me more forward, um, and then yeah, just gave it the best I can. Yeah, now you are that blender positions where you can go you know, inside the midfield. You're doing that for East Romano at the start of this season, and then we see it's more of like a small forward, high half forward for yeah. for state. Is there, I guess, you know, a role that you much prefer? You feel much more comfortable playing. Um. Not necessarily, like, I mean, I'm obviously, like, in the midfield because I've been used to that from Futures and then, Eastern, like, now, the Colts. But at the same time, I'm, uh, I think wherever, the, like, the coaches want me, obviously, it's cliche, but I think wherever the coaches want me and wherever they put me, like, just with the state and stuff, I'd, you know, compete the best I can. Um, and, yeah, and then go from there. I think, obviously, small forward, half forward. I think if I was lucky enough to, you know, make it to the next level, I think that would be where, you know, I sit. Uh, for the time being, but I do think, like, you know, if I can put on some size and, and some more um, bursts, I think I could chip, it, chip in the middle, so. Absolutely. Now, I guess, difference in positions, I'm no expert at either, but I guess midfield, you're yeah. doing way more, you know, gut running back and forth yeah. if you're, you know, a smart mid who's coming <laughs> back to help the defence, but I guess there's that bit more reward for it. I know you're not really a selfish player, but does it feel, not easier in a way, but more rewarding to play midfield where, you know, half forward you're doing a lot of running and maybe not receiving the footy yeah. or you've got a lot of, I guess, outside runs that are just f not for nothing, but mm. you're not getting the footy and you can go the real patches without getting a touch of it. Yeah, oh, it's massive. I think you look at midfield time and there's a lot of uh, unsacrificed, um, a lot of sacrifice running, like both ways. I think obviously there's going to be times where, you know, you just running and you don't feel like you know you're getting in the right spots i think forward line half forward especially when you know a team is dominant on the other side i think it's 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 definitely like probably one of the toughest positions because you obviously still got you know you play your role and you got to get up the ground and you probably do if you're more running than a midfielder um so yeah it's it both has has its like negatives and positive positives but i think you know you know if you're fit and you're able to run off your opponent, no matter where it is, I think you'd yeah, get the better of them. Yeah, now you got a taste of senior footy this year with a couple of reserves games, some handy performances. Um, I guess mm. we maybe could have seen you play some league if you'd been able to stay out there, but you did get your, your two performances of yeah. senior footy and you did well. How, how did it feel to go out there and yeah. what was the step up like, especially as a, a smaller player mm. um, going up to senior footy? Yeah, obviously it's like it's, it's a step up, especially from Colts. It's it's a lot more fast pace, obviously bigger bodies, but you just got to, you know, take it and use and my ability. And um, I think that you obviously played wing and midfield and then forward, so I played a variety of different positions. And, um, yeah, I think I think it's just a more fast pace, but at the same time it's, yeah, it's in a way, yeah, I felt like obviously better my footy and um, made me feel that I could play against better, bigger bodies and, and do a good job, so. Yeah, now obviously you're a you're a real athletic player, I guess with you know your agility, endurance, speed, all that. It's sort of something you lean on in a way. When you go up to senior footy, and obviously you're playing those different roles, does the way you play them change? Do you have to change your approach to playing them? Is there anything that you can pull off in Colts footy, like maybe zipping through a pack, evading players that you couldn't get away with in reserves? Um, not necessarily. I think uh, one thing that you know, state obviously when I was in the midfield uh, harped on was the body work. I think massively when you, as you obviously go up the bigger bodies, I think um, around the contest body work is, is massive um, to get the separation and also obviously to move your opponent and to get to the ball. Um, so that in terms of that craft, I think that's massive in terms of stepping stone for Colts. I think Colts is obviously more like, you know, you just run off your man and you get the ball. Um, so it's obviously when I went into the midfield, it was just, you know, leaning on that a bit. But apart from that, yeah. Yeah, and looking at the champs now, obviously second time around for you, you got a little taste of it last year. So when you come in, you've had that experience. I guess some of the boys might get caught up in the just sort of enjoying the experience, not to say that you didn't, but you've had the experience, yeah. you know, you're going in there, I guess it's more business this time in a way. W did you have any goals or expectations for yourself, for, I guess just personally, yeah. what you wanted to do out there and what you wanted to excel at? 
Yeah, look, it's 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 tough because obviously coming coming from injury and and you know wanting to play the best I can and wanting to show case what I've got because um, I know I can when I when I do play. It's just one of those things that I I didn't want to rush into it and I and I didn't want to get too flustered by you know anything external and the rec- what the recruiters were saying and everything. So I just just went out there and as much as you say, like obviously it's business. Like when I step on the field, but I just kind of made it my goal just to enjoy it and enjoy the experience with the boys and um, and just have fun with it. Obviously, not the result uh, that we w- would have wanted, but the experiences and the takeaways from, obviously, the whole, uh, yeah, four four games was, was great, so. Yeah, it was a very, I guess, topsy-turvy mm. tournament, you could say. There was, you know, started with a thumping, then a good yeah. win, a really close loss, and then another not-so-great performance, yeah, yeah. especially as, you know, a forward not to... I blame it all on the mids and the backs in a way, but you know, you're not getting as much of the footy yeah. and even the footy that you aren't getting for some reason or another, it just isn't working the way it does mm. in those good games. When you're a small forward, especially not the target, how are you trying to work your way in the game and make sure you can consistently still impact when yeah. you're not getting as many opportunities as you were? Yeah, it's a good question. I think, you know, the same as that last game, I think when you play forward and, and the ball's not coming down, you just got to play your other little roles that, Pack the team and slowly but surely, like you, you're bound to get a chance if you, you know, if you're knocking on the door and if you're getting to the contest and you're getting to the for the ball, you're bound to get one opportunity. So I think just keep keep harping on it and keep going at it and um, obviously like your pressure off ball as a forward and um, yeah, your ability to get up the ground and just play your role as a team, especially for state, was a big one. Just obviously in our method, uh, we just had to keep keep going with it. Yeah, I don't want to harp on the losses too much, but obviously they weren't very close. Did anyone pull out any of the old footy cliches of, you know, if they can do it in one half, we can do it as well, boys? Did anyone just come out with some real shit chat to try and <laughs> get the boys back up in about oh. a half time of those games? Oh. Honestly, they probably did. Like, it's probably the, the classic boys, Colton, probably gave it a good, really good nick. Um, you know, I think, you know, it, it, in some of the games, it's, it's, it's hard to, you know, go back on and, uh, and put your head down. I think... Um, yeah, looking at the Allies game, I think we were, we were still positive and we still try to give it a red hot crack. Obviously, the Allies outfit were too good in the end. Um, I just think that obviously we got caught off guard, and especially with the the, the uh, Metro game at the end. Uh, I think we just obviously didn't give it four quarters. However, I think with the boys' capability, if we did, and um, we would have, I think, been a little closer. But not that I can remember. I think <laughs> definitely some of the boys would have, for sure. Uh, now, I guess no matter what I say with this question, you're going to start off with the cliches of, you know, full credit to the boys. <laughs> I couldn't have done it without the team, not the results we wanted. Yeah. You did finish as an All-Australian, so it's a pretty nice honour. You can give me the cliches yeah. if you want, but <laughs> tell me about individually how it felt to, to come away with that. And, mm. uh, yeah, I guess just, you know, what comes with that for you and yeah. your draft chances? Yeah, look, I don't obviously look at it and... As a uh, obviously you know the draft chances and whatnot and what it does, I think looking into it, yeah, obviously like it sort of was in my mind in terms of goal and wanting to play consistent footy. I don't think about all Australians just wanted to play consistent footy, whatever that was. Um, and yeah, hearing that obviously you know get, made me proud and you know what I've been able to do and um, when I have played and, and what I can do when I'm when I'm not injured. So it, obviously that's there and peace of mind. I think. Um, but yeah, in terms of obviously, you look at you know the games and whatnot. I think it's hard not to because it's, it's hard not to give it the cliche because there's so many boys that you know sacrifice their um, games and their roles, um, to, you know, to free me up and do what I can to obviously you know do do well in certain games. So yeah, yeah. Were there any of the WA boys that maybe got a little bit big headed after all Australian honours? <laughs> Anyone sort of has walked with their shoulders a bit yeah, square yeah. and back a bit straighter after? <coughs> oh, I can't stitch him up. I would have said Clay, though. No, <laughs> <laughs> nah, Clay's nah, he obviously all the boys, and I reckon there would be more that deserved it. And obviously, you know, Clay had a great, great carnival in the midfield. So did Dan and then Riley, obviously from the back line. And, but yeah, I would have thought that, you know, some boys as well could be knocking on the door. Um, yeah, it's just one of those things. I think from what we did do and what the games that we did play like not too bad like the, the country game the south australia game that you know made sh- that showed that the boys can play and they can stick it to you know country so 
Yeah, now, obviously, there's a few boys in that side you would have played with before. Mm. Um, there wasn't anyone from East Fremantle, but there was obviously Drisco from Wesley, yeah. a couple of boys you would have played state with in you know, younger years. Yeah. Was there anyone that coming into that tournament, maybe you had played with before, mm. but someone that really impressed you with just how good they were, how they went about it, mm. and you know their impact on the field? Mm. Uh, it's hard, obviously, not to go past, like, you know, <laughs> I, was, I was obviously in the program for a while now, and with boys like, obviously, Riley, Dan... Um, like Mitch Colton, I think um from seventeens um all the way back yeah from the junior yeah junior footy and I think um under twelves it's just it's good to see the progression and the way they kept they kept at it and I think from that seventeens year it's uh it's it's it's, it's a good frame of mind in terms of you know where you can be if you know you put your head down and get to work because obviously the boys coming in like you know Louis Z Fonte and those boys that you know obviously just came into the squad and. Um, just gave it the best effort and competed. I think it was you know, it was a great sign. So yeah, and as far as players you played against, who was someone that really stood out to you as maybe the most difficult opponent you you came up against? Mm. Yeah, that's a good question. I think there's, <laughs> there was a lot of good players um, to play against. I think not necessarily like obviously because I played forward, but I think in the midfield when uh, the first game, just because it was obviously you know starstruck of how well they played and how well they gelled. Um, I think it's hard not to go past the Allies midfield and the way they went about it. Um, they're just slick and they move the ball really well. And, yeah, the likes of, obviously, like Riley Sanders, Jake Rogers and, um, and whatnot, they were, yeah, they're pretty hard. I guess someone like Jake Rogers as well is a pretty like-for-like -like matchup for you. Maybe he plays a bit more midfield, but when you're watching someone that's a, a similar player to you going about it, the way mm. he does, mm. do you sort of, I guess, not sit there wishing, you know, you had what he had, but, mm. you know, see any part of his game that you're like, oh, I wish I could... You know, play like that or anything yeah. that he does that then you're going to try and work on and you know do the same yeah. as him yeah look i look at his game and obviously there's different parts of everyone's game that you look and you say like oh that would be that would be handy if you know you had that yeah. um you know you don't i think you know would have could have should have like you know if you wish you had something but at the same same time you've got to you've got to work with what you got and you know he's, he's a great player he's, he's he's quick and he's powerful so i think yeah just one of the things, obviously, to work on for me and something is my quick, like my quickness and my burst of speed. So, yeah. Yeah, and having played across Australia over the past two years, where would you say? I guess you could may, maybe be a bit biased with it, but where would you say is your favourite ground or the nicest ground you reckon you've played at, or whichever ground you've enjoyed the most? Yeah, oh, I've had some great experiences. Obviously, Seventeens Carnival and uh, obviously playing South Australia. So obviously, similar, similar Perth, um, and then going to obviously Geelong and. Or not in against country last year I think yeah it's hard it's uh it's definitely hard because obviously going over there is, is completely different um but at the same time I think it's hard not to say Optus Stadium because just the way you know home crowd home deck and just you know the crowd getting behind us so. yeah what are the rooms like in Optus compared to like I don't know Laugh Lane or yeah. South from Fremantle like yeah, when you yeah, go yeah. to Optus yeah. especially yeah. I haven't been in the rooms in many clubs yeah. but I feel like and I don't want anyone to get upset here. I feel like Bass and yeah. Dean's probably got some shoddy rooms. I've oh, seen. Riley well, well, won't be happy with that. One. Just, the, just the stands <laughs> and the general Bass and Dean. I, of it I all. like that though. Like I just like it's old fashioned. It's just it's different. Like, yeah. You know, I don't like Eastern Randall's as well. Like the Wacker was pretty confined. I think. Yeah. No. Nah, the, the the rooms that Optus they're big and they're open. They're, yeah. Obviously, everything that obviously an AFL player would want and just the space um, to do their pregame stuff. Um, but yeah, you look at like you know things like bassanine and stuff that the old, but that obviously gives its gives its significance because it's you know older than everyone. Else, yeah, so, yeah. Who's got the worst rooms in the waffle? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh no! Oh, um. <laughs> I'd probably have to say Bass and Dean. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's like, yeah, you know, they're not the greatest, but I mean, like, that's what makes it good because then all the boys get around it and they're just yeah. like, you know, tight. Tight knit, so nah, it's good. I don't want to diss on it because Riley would get mad. Oh, if he gets mad, he gets mad. He gets, he's not your captain anymore, so <laughs> yeah, state's true. over. So no, no. <laughs> doesn't matter. Um, now, as far as obviously doing a lot of rooming with the blokes when you're on yeah. tour, I think you had three away oh, games. I know yeah. oh, no, you had two away games, two away, but yeah. so you would have had some <laughs> hard experiences as well. Who who would you least want to room with? Oh, oh. I'd have to say Juzzy, hands down. Just it's just, just annoying. He's yeah. just, just like he bloody had this sleeping app thing that it just tracks your sleep and it just makes sounds when you're sleeping. And I'm like, mate, just turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> and you just, yeah, I see you talking to sleep. Um, nah, he's he's good. I think he's just uh, just a bit too hyper sometimes. Yeah. Did you just hear the beatboxing thing he did on the radio? 
No. Oh, I didn't hear it either, but Clay was telling me about it yesterday. Apparently he was beatboxing on SEN or something. Because they asked me if he had any special skills. <laughs> oh, after no. asking. I think oh, it's coming no. on Sunday. No, he, never, he never showed me beatboxing, so, so you I'm going to have to hear it. No, yeah. I, I didn't hear anything. Yeah. If he comes on Sunday, I'll have to ask him about yeah, it. Yeah, easy. Give us a little yeah. display. I'll get you two on yeah. together. Oh, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, draft combine, obviously heading into that, you did have the injuries. Was there any you know, moment where you were sort of trying to rehab to get ready for the combine? Was it sort of a race against time, or did you know from the get-go it wasn't happening? Yeah, look, obviously, you know, you think... Oh, like I said, I didn't think it was going to be as worse it, as it was. Um, but, you know, I obviously try to get up to it and, and I listened to everything that, you know, the state physio said and 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 what could I, like, you know, have done to you know, get up to it for it. Um, so I obviously put those in place, but just, you know, it was, yeah, sort of a race against time. And if I was, it would be an iffy and I probably wouldn't have been able to, you know, do my best. But at the same time, like I tried to and I just, you know, wasn't feeling great. So, like, you know, a couple of weeks before, I just obviously asked him and then listened, yeah, obviously listening to my body and just called it because um, it's not worth the risk. And, um, yeah, I just want to be fit and healthy, like, now, so. Yeah, I didn't realise how many blokes... I don't know if it's like that every year, just how many blokes were sitting out this year. Yeah. Like, yeah there's only 60 yeah. blokes. I reckon a third of them weren't even weren't testing. Even doing it. Yeah. It's, uh, it's interesting, like, you know, you don't you know, you don't know what they've got or, yeah. you know... What Who's faking back, it. Back, back in the mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, obviously it's it's pretty annoying because one of the things was obviously the goal to tick that off um, and do well and consistent in that. So it's one of those things. But you just like like I said again, it's it is what it is, and you just got to move on and just do what you can to you know get better now and do my rehab stuff. So I'm slowly building now and getting getting good. So yeah, how did the experience? Obviously, you didn't do the testing, but with media duties and I guess just any interviews you had with clubs, how did that yeah. stack up to what you're expecting? Because yeah. You guys had a lot of free time. Like it wasn't yeah. a very. I'm not saying yeah. that I could have done a better scheduling system because I imagine it's pretty pretty yeah. tough. But the schedules were very here and there and everywhere. Yeah. No. Obviously, like you know, seeing different people's schedules and stuff was just like, oh, it's like you know, some people have got like you know hours upon free time, and then they've got the interview. I think, yeah, it's one of the things. I, you know, going into it, I kind of you know expected what you know what I what I had, but at the same time, like you know, the medicals and um like the amount of time that you're actually spending there and then you have to wait around was was, was pretty taxing. Um, but at the end of the day, like, you know, not t- yeah, not testing is was annoying, but you just got to enjoy the experience and, you know, do the best you can in the interviews and that's what I said. So, you know, just you know, saying what you got to say and, uh, yeah, get on the best foot for the interview, so... Yeah, now I'm sure this wasn't the most important thing for you going into there, but did you make any new friends? Obviously, there's all, the, there's all these boys you've never yeah, met yeah. before, you've played against, yeah. you, you've, you'd be doing, you know, sitting next to each other, waiting around yeah. together. Did you make any new friends while you're over there? <laughs> no, it's good because obviously, like, you're sitting around and uh, there's some boys that, you know, just sitting around as well and, you, you know, talk to them. Some boys, you know, just you know, don't want to talk. Some boys do. Um, so, yeah, no, nah, obviously, I don't know about making friends because they're over there, but obviously, you know, talk with them quite a bit and, you know, chatted to them about the experience and, and whatnot. And obviously, there's some Irish boys over there, so it was good to obviously give them an insight with them and, you know, how they go about it and that sort of Were thing. Were they tough to understand? Nah. No, okay. No, nah, nah, I thought, nah, it's not fine. <laughs> I've struggled with <laughs> Irish <laughs> people. It's, it's really tough. I can't do Irish people or sometimes Scottish people with, like, really yeah, thick accents. 100%. Or Welsh. You ever heard a Welsh accent? No, no. Oh, my first drive, in, like the first time I got tested for my license, I uh, was a Welsh guy. Yeah, um, I failed that because I didn't hear him telling me to park in a certain bay, and then it was <laughs> it was a whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> it was a whole thing. So, not saying I'm anti-Welsh, That's but Welsh, yeah. oh, I just okay. don't want to be in a car with a Welsh oh. person anymore. Yeah. Um, the it, food was it parallel though, or was it? Like no, it was just it was at the end. I was, was pissed. It was at the end of the test. This was my birthday as well. Chilly Skipped enough. my English exam to or got my English exam postponed so I could do it. It was my birthday, and then we were, like, pulling into the licensing centre after I'd passed, and I thought we were going right at the end where all the yeah. other cars parked for yeah. the test. He went, pull in right, but I didn't hear him because he had a Welsh accent. It sounded like a... <laughs> 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 I, was like I was like, sick, brother. <laughs> Cheers. Well, so you just kept going. <laughs> kept going, and then he starts screaming to go right. So I bang it in and uh, almost clip a car. He slams the brake on his side, and I get instant failed at the car park at the licensing centre. I was human. That's a stitch. That's I was, stitch. so yeah. yeah I gotta admit, that's a stitch. It's taken me a while to get over that. Yeah, no, so. I've, I've been fuming the first time I went and that was, yeah. Yeah, it was not a good experience. No. Um, it's never, never is. Food at the Combine. I heard yeah. last year 
there was a few complaints. Mm. Um, was it a good Was it a good spread this year? Uh, I'll take it. Like, <laughs> like I was pretty hungry. Like you know, sitting around, you always have some snacks. I think. Uh, oh no, you, you can't complain. I think you know, you know, you, you, get, you get some fruit bowls and that was whatnot. And was it just a buffet or did they have like? Yeah, it's buffet. And I think there was a lot of people. There was a lot of guys and obviously the coaches. So you know, in terms of you know what goes, uh, yeah, it was pretty quick. But. Same time, you can't complain. I think some, some some things like you know when you're hungry and you just want a decent meal, you just they served up like little tiny like fruit bowls or something like that. It was not ideal, but at the same time, you're gonna. Are there like sandwiches or stuff as well? Like yeah, there were sandwiches. Maybe the party pie sausage roll mix coming. Yeah, out. yeah, I think something along the lines of that. Lines of that. I think the the sandwiches just had like some like I don't like mayo, and they all had mayo, and I was just like, no. Nah. That's terrible catering from the AFL. Yes, yeah, this, this company has so much money. I was money. just like, no, why mayo? And like, the media weren't even really allowed like <laughs> food, so like I had to go into Richmond. And buy my own food. It was, I didn't pay. It was Zambrero. I worked there, so it was free. But <laughs> <laughs> it was still fuming. I had to walk yeah. half an hour to bloody get someone to eat. Yeah, no, I mean they're pretty good. Like you know, catered for my non allergy, so I was pretty happy. Oh, okay, that. so they were um, no, they were good. You can't complain. Just have it. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, yeah, spending your spare time. What what were you doing exactly? Were you did you uh, have uni that you were trying to catch up on? Were you just sort of fertilizing? Uh, I heard a bit of Among Us was going on. Oh, uh, yeah. No, Colton always wanted to play Among Us. Um, Dan as well. Um, no, nah, I think just sort of chilling. I just wanted to give my mind a break from uni for a bit. Um, obviously, before exams. Um, yeah. I don't actually don't. I can't. Yeah. I, think I was always, like, around. So, I obviously didn't really, you know, do much. I think, oh, yeah, caught up with Dad because Dad was, you know, there. Yeah. So, I obviously, was chilling him for a bit but apart from that like you know yeah not much just yeah there. did you have any i guess like curly questions or any like interesting conversations with the clubs because yeah. I've, I've heard some of the stuff that went on there and there was yeah, some yeah. strange ones there did you was. cop anything weird uh no some of the boys said there was like some pretty strange ones i i, I didn't really get any strange ones i think the only well not i can remember the only one that i can remember um wasn't necessarily strange it was just like out, you know out of the Ordinary, it's just like I don't know where they were just like, oh, you got to speak for you know two minutes straight. Any any of us, uh, any, you know, anything, just you know, start the conversation and continue it. That's. Uh, and I was just like, right. what'd you talk about? <laughs> I don't know. I just I just rambled on. <laughs> I just yeah, it was pretty funny. But so you had to like talk two minutes and none of them said a word. Or no, no, they, they answered back. Comes. It's like a conversation. Okay. You just gotta, you know, you just I don't, I don't know what it's. You know, just how the wife and kids are. Yeah, and all that yeah, stuff. yeah. I think yeah, it was, it was pretty funny, but. Yeah, I think I, I did I did alright. So did you cop any like um if you had to take if you if you were coming in to replace a player yeah, yeah. on this side yeah, was it casual. was it you that told me about that one? Someone told me about that one that they got and they were with Geelong and they said Grian Myers and Grian Myers was in there. Oh yeah, that's me. That was yeah, you. That was me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did did yeah. you know Grian was in there? And you yeah, no, it was right next to me. And like it's I couldn't I couldn't get out of it because like obviously. You know, the recruiter that came obviously over to my house before. Um, yeah. Obviously, I said that Grian, and it's not like I said like I'm gonna take Grian out. And no, like my thing. I was just like I'm up for the challenge to you know work off him and, and learn obviously what he's what he's got because he's a great player. Um, Did he say anything to you? No, he said he just, just laughed. <laughs> he's probably like, "What are you going about, mate?" <laughs> like just broken the assist <laughs> yeah, record. Right. You're like, "Oh yeah, I'll probably come in and just replace <laughs> him." Like I don't know, no, put him in the twos was, for a bit. I was pretty. Like, I was just like, "No, nah, I'm not gonna." Obviously, I want to learn off you. Like I, I said it, like you know. In a, way, in a way that you know he doesn't say that yeah. I'm gonna you know try to it, but yeah, definitely it'd be a good challenge. So you've made an enemy now. <laughs> if you ever played your long line, he's changed it. What were your thoughts on his? I don't know if yeah. I should get your opinion. What were your thoughts on his haircut? Because it's a bit. Oh, man. Oh. Do you know? I, was, oh. I don't know if I'm in a position to comment on haircuts. Oh, I can't really but say. If I diss his haircut now, he's just gonna actually. Yeah, he's actually, gonna off uh, yeah, I better. Yeah, so I'd, so I'll, I'll say I prefer the dreadlocks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do you reckon you'd get dreadlocks like him? Oh, not in my like uh, previous haircuts, so uh, it could be a possibility. I feel like you'd rock some dreadies. Yeah, the curly hairs are a bit annoying, but dreadies would probably be more annoying, so probably not. No, do you reckon you'd have anything like interesting in the works? Like, see what you got now, it's a pretty routine setup. It's a nice yeah. haircut, but yeah. pretty routine. Do you reckon you could go for anything strange? Um, be one of those players who really stand, stand out, once, out you, yeah. once you join the league. Well, I've done blonde in the past, and I've, you know, peroxide it, and it's just not ideal. Like, yeah. just like, you just, it looked a bit whack. Some people said it looked good, some people didn't. But um, what are you going to do? Yeah, it's hairdressing stuff here. I can give you some frosted tips yeah, today. Yeah, if you sure. Like. Yeah, do you, you want frosted like tips? Yeah, no, yeah. yeah. Sounds good, yeah. I'll right, we'll sort that out yeah, after yeah. you. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> now, it's a year's all wrapped up. Um, yeah. Have you finished uni or are you coming into exams now? Yeah, I've got two exams next week. So, just okay. finishing up the 
you've done. Yeah, so what does OSS period look like for you? Mm. And you specifically, are you one of those players where it's tough to get the draft out of the back of your head mm. or are you pretty good with, I guess, mm. moving on with your day? Yeah, look, obviously it's, you know, you have the talks and, you know, you get your friends and whatnot and it's all in the background. I think, I think I'm pretty good in the way I go about it, ignoring social media and ignoring, ignoring that side. I think at the end of the day, like I said, it is what it is and it, if – if it does happen, like until it does happen, like if it does, um, you know that's when I, you know, you got to put my mind to it. I think, yeah, obviously you think about it, but I think with uni and studying and then catching up with my mates and girlfriend and whatnot, that they just take my mind off it. So yeah, yeah absolutely. Who who in the state program is the one that's always checking the media <laughs> and like because it's got to be someone because I, I hear oh. it of blokes who are complaining yeah, about yeah. um you know their draft profiles <laughs> or like articles about them. Who's the one sending it into the group chat? Oh. I can't stitch to that. Oh, just, you can, I, mate. This is a I just can't. No, no, this I, is a safe space. No, I mean, look at him. I just, yeah. Is it Clay? Because he said he was upset. <laughs> he got a low ceiling on, <laughs> or an average ceiling on oh, one of his draft profiles. No, no, no. Yeah, I don't know. No I, comment. Yeah, no comment. Yeah. No comment. Playing it safe. I today. think. I think you know though. I think you okay. Know who it's Riley, isn't it? He loves. Yeah, he loves right. himself. Yeah, um, right. and as far as you know, the draft. What are your plans for yeah. for the night? I, I assume. Not, not saying you're not going to go first round, but I assume maybe you've made your plans for the second round. Yeah. Specifically, do you, do you have anything uh, you know for night two planned? Yeah. Well, obviously, looking at it, you just never know what happens. I think. Um, yeah. You know, looking at it like you know, realistically, I don't think you know, obviously round one, but obviously round two, I think, you know, I, I want just the family, like just obviously going on the humble side, but you know, all my mates and my brother's mates want to come on over, and you know, just no matter what happens, they're like, oh, we'll just be there and you know, have fun, whatever. And I'm just like, well, you know, we'll see, yeah. <laughs> see how we go. So it's always hard. I don't know. I'll, I'll know, like obviously closer if I'm you know more confident and whatnot, but I think yeah, just family for me. Have you got anything planned for night one just in case? Because t- <laughs> it, it looks like it could be up to like yeah. 27 picks for the first yeah. round. Are you just going to be with, you know, mum, dad and any siblings that you might have? Or? Yeah, yeah, obviously, obviously the whole family, just, um, yeah, mum, dad and brother, sister and, um, yeah, look, obviously see, like, I'm always obviously thinking, like, going on the humble side that you just, but obviously, like you said, like, you never know, so, you know, you know girlfriend, mates, mate. There we go. Yeah, absolutely. And just finally, if you were to have to move interstate um, for the draft, would you rather, because I've always thought about this, would you rather live with, like, some of the blokes from the club? Because I reckon that'd be sick. You move yeah. interstate, you're living with, like, three other blokes from the club. Yeah. Club's giving you money for furniture and <laughs> all that, giving you your allowances for yeah, all this stuff. Yeah. Or would you rather live with, like, a host family where, like, you've got a lovely mm. host mum that's cooking you great dinners, <laughs> you know? Really, the, the, it's sort of like you're living with your family still. Yeah, look, it's... I don't know, like, because you know, unless you experience that, like, you don't either, like, you don't know, like, the, the pros and cons to, to both. I think either way, like, you're going to, you know, you're going to have to do your own stuff. You're going to have to be organised. You're going to have to cook for yourself on certain nights. So I think, you know, each to their own. It'd be pretty cool to, you know, live in the same place as, like, one of the senior senior boys, especially if, it, you know, it'd be, like, you know, the likes of, like, a great player. So it's just, like, you can learn off and see what they do. Like, Who would you most want to live with in the AFL if you could pick someone? Oh, that's a, that's a good. <laughs> yeah. that's a, oh, geez. grind wise, you can apologise. Yeah, it's obviously yeah, up there. yeah, it's a good. Credit. Yeah, great. Yeah, grind wise would be. Yeah, yeah you're gonna. Lock it I'm going. Lock, 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 yeah. Lock, 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 lock. <laughs> All right. Well, Colin, that's all I've got for you. Thank you for coming on, mate. I wish Jesus. you um, yeah, best luck with your exams. Best of luck with uh, your golf in the next few, few weeks. Hopefully, you can really work on that ahead of the draft. Thanks, and uh, I'd wish you best of luck on Sunday, but there's no point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>